Hello, um, this is the part two of a series that I'm making of me drawing this illustration of Fantasy Eye. Um, as you can see, I already have the sketch done, and um, if you want to see me make the sketch for this drawing, I have another video of me doing that. It's part one, um, but in this video, I'm doing the color and the line art. Um, now I usually do line art first, um, usually in black, and then I make that layer a reference layer, and then I color drop the colors in on a different layer. Um, but for this one, for some reason, I decided to do the colors first, um, using the selection tool, or in some cases, outlining it and dropping in the color. Um, and at this point, I was mostly, um, deciding on the colors based on the official Fantasy High character art. Um, I wasn't, um, like, color dropping or anything like that. I had it open on, um, a different tab, and, um, I was just sort of eyeballing it because I wanted to, um, do my best to use similar colors that link each of the characters together since they all have pretty different color screams. Like, for example, the, um, green, purple, brown, and red I use throughout, and I make them the same unless I needed to make a lighter or darker version of it, like how I have the lighter brown and then the darker brown, um, and then, like, the sort of tan, um, that I use for, like, the khakis that Kristen's wearing, and then I also have that light gray and dark gray that you can see in Gorgag's axe and his sweatshirt, um, but for things like the red, um, the red in Fig Skirt is the same as the one in, um, the, um, Letterman jacket that Fabian's wearing, um, and then I use the same purple in, um, Gorgug's backpack and, um, Adine's shirt that you can see peeking through her jean jacket and, um, Kristen's tie-dye shirt, um, which I do struggle with the tie-dye a little bit, um, I did, like, look up separate references for tie-dye shirts, because I didn't really understand how they worked. Um, and then things like the green, um, for her staff, and, um, her Gorgugs, and, um, Riz's skin, um, are slightly different, but, um, they're, um, they come from the same green. I just made, um, Riz's skin a bit lighter, and Gorgugs a little bit darker, um, because I used a darker green for Riz's hair and I wanted them to contrast each other. Um, and yeah, I used the same colors on um, the hangman that I used um, in Fabian. And then um, this pink is sort of where it really shines. Um, and at points like this, um, you can sort of start thinking about um, the lighting, um, and you can see here, I'm, since, um, Riz is in the crystal, I was sort of figuring out the overlay layer, um, for the crystal and how that would work, um, and then for the background, since there's a lot of stuff going on, um, I put it on a separate layer than the characters, and, then I did all of that coloring, um, whatever color I wanted it to be, and then I would, um, dim it down and fade it out with a dark blue, um, just so I would be able to have that, um, contrast. Um, and with the lighting, I was starting to think, um, there would be light coming off the crystals and Adine's, um, orb and the arcade game screens and so sort of keeping that in mind with like how they're sort of like a light blue and a light pink um and keeping like the the values of the colors in mind um one way to do this if you're um, doing digital art is having a separate layer on top that's just black and then changing the layer mode to saturation so that'll change it to um black and white, um, 
just so you can sort of see um, how um, how contrasting the values are in the colors that you're using. Um, yeah, so you can, um, you know, keep the, the lighting in mind as you're doing coloring, but I'll talk about the lighting more in the next video. Um, but um, I do end up making some of the crystal shards fade out um, that are at the edge just so that Riz and his crystal stands out more. Um, and I sort of play around with the layer modes that I'm using, I believe. Um, I also like duplicated the layers of the arcade screens and the crystals and made a Gaussian blur. And like, I think I made that a soft light layer, maybe a screen layer. Um, but play but layer modes are like something you, you know, need to play around with depending on what your illustration is and what the colors are and what kind of mood you want to convey. Um, yeah, and then for the line art, I used a new brush that I made, so I was kind of iffy about it, but then I ended up liking it. Um, I also wanted to make the line art different colors, so I took, um the color of the specific thing that I was outlining and made it darker. I ended up putting that whole layer in multiply, um, so with all of the other stuff going on you can't really tell um, at all, but you know, it's fine. Um, you know, you need to play around and do different things to sort of find out what works. Um, you know, you can also see me like turning off and on layers all the time. Um, because the background was so dark, it was difficult me. It was difficult for me to see what I was doing with the line art. Um, but one thing that I do is I usually make a really complete sketch layer. So oftentimes during my inking process, I'm not really adding any new information. So I'm basically just tracing the sketch below it. Um, that's probably also one of the reasons why this took me um, almost. 30 hours. It was like 28 hours and some change. Um, anyway, I also, um, when I'm doing line art, I take the parts that are I know are going to be the darkest shadows and I fill those up with the line art. So once again, this is thinking about um, how the lighting is going to be um, structured. Um, it's one of those things that I really like doing. Um, I think it adds a lot of depth and weight to the drawing. Um, I do it a lot, um, specifically in the gaps of the hangman. One, because, um, I don't really understand how the engine of the hangman is structured, um, so I kind of, um, bullshitted my way through that. Um, but, you know, it ended up looking fine, and, um, the fire in the hangman's eyes sort of drew all of that attention away from the engine, so it's fine. Um, I also, um, made the lines on the floor thinner the farther back it went. Um, that's just a perspective thing, um, that I struggled with, um, once I get to it. But, yeah, that's basically it. Um, and in the next video, I'll get on to the lighting and rendering. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.